See, that wasn't that bad. Here, excuse me, Harry. Um, let's uh, just jump right into it. So, my name is Mr. Brennan. And again, I encourage you in your notebook to write your name, maybe even write the date so you can look at when you did this. We are going to do uh, 9.1, just the evens. So, here we go. Um, question number two. What process can you use to answer a statistical question? And I'm going to say to, and I wouldn't write this on the, um, the computer, but I would sure write it on my paper because it helps me learn to answer a statistical question. See there, huh? question and the answer. You love that when I do that. Um, I got to do several things, and it wasn't really perfectly clear in the book, so I'm just going to go by my own answers. Um, the first thing you need to do is collect. You need to collect data. You need to organize it. Uh, you need to analyze it. You got it. Make meaning. And then the the last part of analyzing, you need to interpret it. That's when you decide. You don't just notice things about it when you're analyzing. You notice clumps and clusters, but you decide what it means. Data. Okay, to a question. I hope that makes sense. That's what this whole lesson's about. We've been doing this stuff uh, kind of since kindergarten. They were tricking you into looking at different colors of things and uh, and here we are finally at the not the conclusion you can take statistics classes in college where you deal with lots more than mean median and mode answer the question tell whether your answer would be the same as your classmate how many inches are in a foot in one foot not your foot but in the so um, answer the question the answer is 12 inches yeah, I'm going to make that little um, Quotation mark sign, that means inches, two syllables, inches. And I would expect to be the same. Same as classmates. These are going to be easy, huh? Number six. Uh, on what day of the month were you born? Well, I was born on the 30th. And I would say that's probably not the same. Well, it could be the same as one, but not all my classmates. The same. That's probably good enough. Number eight. You do some math. Determine whether the question is statistical question. Hmm. We learned about that on the other pages. What is a statistical question and what's not a statistical question. So, and we get a big hint from here. So what is the eye color of sixth grade students? So we're going to have to do all that, collect, organize data. We're going to have to do all that. So this is statistical. And why is it statistical? Because they will be different. Get lots of different data. Number 10, boy, this is going fast. You've only had this less than four minutes. How many pages are in your favorite books of students your age? That also is statistical. Why? Because they will be different. Can we get lots of different answers to a question like that? Number 12. Display the data in a dot plot. Identify any clusters, peaks, or gaps in the data. So on the form, the Google form, I said, don't worry about uh, making dot plot because you can't put that on the, the form. But um, for us here, you need to, if you're going to answer the questions, where the clusters peaks or gaps in the data. You need to do that. So this is really a pretty easy thing. 
Easy vocabulary, you know what a cluster is. A peak and gaps, you know what a gap is. Peak's the only question, and all you got to do is look back at this page right here. Peak is something that's poking out its difference. Could it have multiple peaks? Sure. There's a cluster, all these guys together. There's a gap, there's none of them. So uh, I don't know how you're going to answer this question without making a, a dot plot. We used to call these line plots. And it looks like I've got values from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let me make my line a little bigger, 6. So here's a 2. Here's a 2. So 1, 1, 2, 6, 0, 1, 0, 1, 2, and 0. So here's a cluster. So I'm going to say cluster uh, 0 to 2, right? 0 to 2 is a cluster. Uh, peak. at two so later on um we're going to call that peak maximum right and then there's a gap from three to five okay these are kind of fun let's do another one you wanna let's try 14. so um what's the smallest one i got two thousand eight I'm just going to write 08. You think that's okay? I think it's okay. 09, 10, 11, oh, up to 13, 12, 13. Okay. So, oops, can you see this? You see them both? Maybe. Don't mean to make you seasick. 2011, 2009. 2010, 2008, and I try to make my X's, you see I didn't do a very good job up here on the other one, but I try to make them about the same height, so the data will make sense, about half a line, so 12, 2013, 2010, 2009, 2009, 2009 and 2010. So let's start clusters. Well, this is open to interpretation, but I'm going to say 9 and 10 are, are clusters. Yeah, there's not, um, there's stuff everywhere else, but here's where the bulk of them are. So how about a peak? Not one peak, but I think there's two. I'm going to say, uh oh, <laughs> I'm going to say 9 and 10 again are peaks. How about any gaps? Well, there's not really any. There's some data point for each one. And you could almost argue that there's a cluster there if you had, because there's none here and there's none here. So um, I'm going to say, in my interpretation, there are no gaps. That makes sense? Okay. Let's go on to number 16. This question made me laugh when I looked at it before because it's about how much homework kids are doing. And I think, ha, 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 that's really funny. Because so far we've been at this for eight minutes and 50 seconds. And I've been chatting. So um, you conduct a survey to answer how many hours does a, sixth, does a sixth grade student spend on homework during the school night? <laughs> we don't even have school nights anymore. The table shows the results. Uh, a, is this a statistical question? Well, there's lots of different answers, so yes. A, statistical cow question. B, display the data on a dot plot. Identify any clusters, peaks, or gaps. We like that. Okay, here's my dot plot. What's the least? Because I know the least is really zero. I'm going to put that for you guys because I know there's lots of you who don't do any. Of course, you're probably not watching this video, right? It's those other guys, not you. One, two, three, 
for in what kid does five hours of homework a night? Believe it or not, in my other school, I had kids that would do five or six hours of homework a night. It was not a healthy situation. So let's go ahead and put our, not our dots, we could put dots, but I like X's because it helps me keep them about the right um, level. So I'm going to say two, I'm going to make these smaller, two, one, two, I should have made dots, huh? Four, two again, what am I doing? Three, three, I'm going to jump up here, two again, five, what are you thinking, kid? Two again, one, and two again. So I sort of cheated here, but look here, we have an enormous peak. There's definitely a cluster here, one, two, and three. There's enormous peak, so I'm going to call my cluster. Isn't that what it used the distribution? Oh, that's this part. Identify any clusters. Clusters. I'm going to say that's one to three. Um, what else does I want to know? Uh, peaks. Definitely peaks is a two. Um, and gaps. I'm going to say no gaps. No gaps. Uh-oh, can't me to read my writing. Um, letter C. Use the distribution of the data to answer the question. The question was, uh, how many hours does a sixth grade student spend on homework? The answer here is, it's going to be about two. Kids. Uh, work about two hours we can say that because that loops in one and two one and three are about two but the the bulk of the data says two even let's see one two three four five six three four five six half the kids spend exactly two hours so that's a pretty good answer for us number 18 how can I show you this? Just a second. Oh, you need the camera. Mm -hmm. Number 18, the vertical dot plot. Oh, I gotta get you in here. The vertical dot plot shows the heights of the players on a recent NBA championship team. Um, this is not in it should have the uh, tell what it is. It's in, it's not in centimeters. It's in inches. Um, how many players were on the team? Well, this should be pretty easy for us. How many basketballs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. There are eighteen players on. The team. I told you this is kind of fun. Uh, that's A. There's three questions here. B. How can you collect? How can you collect these data? What are the units? Oh, I jumped ahead. I remember this question being before. So you, how would you collect these da this data? B to collect data. All you have to do is measure the players. Measure their what height. And the um, the units are inches. Unit inches. Ooh. Sorry about that. I'm writing in the margin. I know I don't like to do that, but I want to use a whole other line. Write a statistical question that you can answer using the dot plot. Then answer the question. So my question is, how tall are uh, players on a recent I don't know which one. 
NBA champion. Hmm. Well, and here's the answers. The answers are they're all over the place. So I might talk about a range from 72 inches, which how tall is that? 72 inches. That's six feet. So the shortest guys are six feet. So um, there's definitely cluster here. It's a hard question to answer, but I'm going to say from, I'm just going to use the range because it, it's not an even distribution, but um, I'm going to say, oh, we got a question mark. And the answer is from 72 to 85 inches with most being taller than this break right here. Here's a cluster, huh? 79 inches. All right. Let's move on. Question number 20. Use the internet to research and identify the method of measurement and units used when collecting data about the topic. So lots of things. We're not going to use the internet. There's only one of these questions. This is 9.1, question number 20. So how would you figure out the amount of rainfall? Um, I'll write this to calculate. Rainfall. Use a rain gauge. So yeah, you just have a cup that has a, a cylinder. It's a cylinder that collects water, and then you can see how much it rains. We didn't need the internet for that. Number 22, the dot plot shows the speeds of cars in a traffic study. Ooh. Estimate the speed limit. Explain your reasoning. Hmm, this one's a good interpretation question. We've got to analyze first, look at the data. So this guy's an outlier. It's going pretty slow. It's so the fastest part. So it's going to be somewhere in the middle. You know what I bet? I bet the 45, usually you don't see a 43 or 44 or 46 mile per hour. And it's got to be somebody speeding. So I'm going to say that I think it's 45 miles per hour. See this? 45 mph. And why? Because it is a round number. Number. And there is a data cluster around it. So if you're going to find the cluster, it'd be around here. You have two peaks. It's a little bit slower and right at the speed limit. So that's my guess. I wonder what your guess is. Number 24. How many letters are in the English alphabet is not a statistical question. Write a question about letters that is a statistical question. Explain your reasoning. So it's not a statistical question because it's the same for you and same for me. How about our question is, how many letters are in your name? And my um, explanation is because it's going to be different. For many people. It's a good question, huh? That might be fun. If we were doing, if we were in school, we'd be doing this, all these statistics, and we would be having so much fun counting stuff and bothering people to find out numbers. Oh, I wish I was in school. How about that? Funny thing to say. Uh, and these are all our fair game reviews have been kind of the same. This is, is what you got to do. Tell whether the ordered pair is a solution. 
to the equation. So I'm going to do a substitution, but before I do that, I'm going to write it out. And if I were doing my homework on the computer like you are, I would still write all of this out. I always would. Okay? You don't, let's don't be lazy. This is going to help your thinking, especially for guys like me. I'm a tactile learner. I need to touch this, and I need to kinesthetically, I need to move around and see how this goes. So I'm just going to replace the X. It's going to be, so this is the Y is 8 equals 4 times 2. Is that true? 8 and 8. And so this is, yes, it's a solution. Uh, the last one, y equals 6x minus 15. 28y equals 6x minus 15, where y is 9. 9 equals 6 times what? 6 times 4 minus 15. So that means 9 equals 6 times 4 is 24. 24 minus 15 is 9. Yes, it's a solution. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Um, I did. Uh, I think I might even do another one today. How about that? So um, do your homework. Stay caught up. Um, in love this opportunity. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye bye.